Matthew chapter 23. Then Yeshua conversed with the crowd and his disciples. He told them, The Torah teachers and Pharisees have seated themselves in Moses' seat. Now everything that they tell you to obey, brackets, people didn't own copies of the Torah, you must practice, but don't do what they do, because they don't practice what they teach. They bundle heavy burdens and load them on people's shoulders, but they won't lay a finger on them themselves. Everything that they do is done for appearances, like when they broaden their teflon and extend their tzitzits on their clothing. They love the best seats in the suppers, in the best seats in the synagogues, and salutary greetings in the marketplaces, and being addressed by people as my great one. Don't let anyone call you great one, because there is only one great one, and you are all his friends. Don't call yourselves father on earth, because there is only one spiritual father, the heavenly one. Don't be called guides, because there is only one spiritual guide, the Messiah. The greatest person among you will be your servant. Anyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and anyone with a modest opinion of themselves will be honored. I pity the Torah teachers, because you block the entrance to the kingdom of the heavens right in front of people. You aren't coming in yourselves, and you prevent those who are beginning to come in from entering. I pity you Torah teachers, Pharisees and pretenders, because you devour widows' houses under the pretext of long prayers. This is why you will receive greater condemnation. I pity you Torah teachers, Pharisees and pretenders, because you traverse land and sea to make a single convert to Judaism. And when they become one, you make them twice the son of Gehenna as yourselves. I pity you blind guides, because you say, whoever swears by the temple is doing nothing wrong, but whoever swears by the gold that's in the temple is bound by the oath. You blind fools! Which is more important, the gold or the temple that causes the gold to be dedicated? And you say, whoever swears by the altar is doing nothing wrong, but whoever swears by the offering lying on it is obligated. You blind fools! Which is greater, the offering or the altar that dedicates the offering? So anyone who swears by the altar swears by it and by everything that's on it. Anyone who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who lives in it. Anyone who swears by heaven swears by Jehovah's throne and by the one who sits on it. I pity you Torah teachers. Pharisees and pretenders, because you give a tithe of your mint, dill, and cumin, but you neglect the weightier requirements of the Torah, judgment, mercy, and fidelity. You should do those without neglecting the others. You blind guides strain out gnats and swallow camels. I pity you Torah teachers, Pharisees, and pretenders, because you clean the outside of cups and dishes, while inside you are full of plundering and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cups and dishes, so that the outside will be clean as well. I pity you Torah teachers, Pharisees and pretenders, because you're like whitewashed tombs that appear beautiful on the outside, but are full of dead people's bones and every kind of uncleanness. Outwardly you appear to people to be righteous men, but inwardly you are against the Torah. Brackets Greek Anomia Fully committed conmen. I pity you Torah teachers, 
Pharisees and pretenders, because you rebuild the tombs of the prophets and you decorate the monuments of the righteous. You say, if we had lived in these days of our ancestors, we would never have taken part in shedding the blood of the prophets. But you are witnesses against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. You will finish the measures that your ancestors started. You serpents, you offspring of vipers, how can you escape being condemned to Gehenna? That's why I am sending you prophets and eloquent speakers and Torah teachers. Some you will kill and crucify. Some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from town to town. Consequently, you will be responsible for all the blood of the righteous that's ever been shed on the earth, from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, who you killed between the temple and the altar. I assure you that all of these things will unexpectedly happen to this present generation. O oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who murder the prophets and stone those who have been sent to you, how often I wanted to gather your children like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you refused. Now your house, brackets the temple, is left abandoned. I assure you that you won't see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of Jehovah!